When I first heard about Gravity Rush getting a sequel, Gravity Rush 2, I was quite excited, and I saw that it was going to be on the PlayStation 4, which I had no issue with, but one thing did come up that crossed my mind. What about the people who never played the first Gravity Rush that was a PlayStation Vita exclusive? And to my knowledge, I don't even know if it works on the PlayStation TV because it relies heavily on the front and back sensors of it. So somebody could report back to me on that. I personally never tried it. Well, this is the answer to that. At the same time Gravity Rush 2 was announced, they also ended up announcing Gravity Rush Remastered, which, as you can guess it, is a rebuilt version of Gravity Rush, but going from the PlayStation Vita to the PlayStation 4. Now, so far, what are my thoughts on it? Do I think it is a worthy remaster or anything like that? Well, I'll kind of tell you here with my first impressions of this. Now, this is not going to be a complete comprehensive review. This is just my first thoughts on it, and it does help that I have played a little bit of the game before. So, I experienced on the Vita, and now I get to experience it on the PlayStation 4. So, first off, to anybody who has originally played this game on the Vita, why would you pick it up on the PlayStation 4? Well, first off, if you don't really want to use the Vita, you can now use the DualShock 4 for this. You use the 6-axis feature on there and the controller touchpad all that other stuff the game has also been boosted up to 1080p 60 frames per second and the frame rate stays quite smooth so you get double the frames and you also get full HD on here so this looks good on almost any screen and trust me this is a beautiful looking game now if you're like me and you have the Vita version but you didn't buy any of the DLC there are extra costumes missions all that stuff and the remastered version actually comes with all the DLC so that's a nice bonus with it and the best part of it is it's it's half the price of a regular retail game, while this game retails for 30 US dollars. So it's a discounted game, and I think for that price, it is worth it so far. Now, for anybody who has not played this, what is it about? Well, you wake up as a scantily clad anime type girl in a anime kind of type world. So you'd have to get used to that if you're not into that art style or anything like that. You might need to pass over this game if you can't get into it. But if you do appreciate that stuff, then hey, you know what? You might enjoy this game. But anyways, you go ahead, you wake up. Your name is Cat unofficially. And you also wake up with a cat who is kind of a super power creature type thing. Of course, it's a cat, but it gives you superpowers at the same time that allows you to fly around and defy gravity and all that other stuff. I know it sounds really weird, doesn't it? It's because there's nothing really else like this out on the market. Now, at the beginning of the game, you also run into another person named Raven who also has an animal and can do the same things, which just... What animal do you think she has? Yeah, it's a Raven. It's there. I mean, do you see the correlation here? Essentially, all you know is nothing. You don't know what your name is. You don't know if you have a home, where your home might be, if you do have one, if you have any friends, family. You don't even know how you got there, and it seems like the people who just met you 10 seconds ago know more about you than you know of yourself. But you realize that you have these superpowers. You're trying to help people, but helping people might not be your forte. So from here, you pretty much need to find out how to live. You end up finding your own place, you furnish it, and you need to progress through the story to figure out who you are, what these superpowers do, and and how you can help the people around you. Now, the original Gravity Rush that played on the PlayStation Vita relied heavily on the touchscreen and the back touch sensor. So, how does this play out? Well, it actually plays out quite well. Now, so far, you really don't need to use too much of the uh, touchpad or anything like that. And to my knowledge, I don't even remember having to use it in the little bit I played of this game. But it relies on the thumbsticks and moving around the controller itself, which works in game and also in cutscenes as well, too, where you're able to move move around, kind of look around in a 360 degree angle, and there are traditional cutscenes as well as comic book style cart cutscenes, so you kind of combine a lot of different art styles in this game, which is what I love to see. And with that, that is why I also like the huge graphical boost to this game, where you went from the small PlayStation Vita screen where they could get away with having, you know, standard definition graphics, now boosted up to 1080p, and again, going from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second, so this game is much more fluid than the original original Vita version was. However, I also still very much enjoyed the Vita version of this game. Now the flying, defying gravity, all that stuff, it's really tricky at first and you're probably going to kind of fly around everywhere and fail a little bit like what I did, but once you got everything under control, you realize that the main controls are the thumbsticks R1 and L1 
and you realize that it's actually pretty fun to move around and you know fly around the city and all that stuff and I have had a great time doing that in this game so far. It's demonstrated extremely well with the DualShock 4 controller and it's definitely fun to play around with. Now the audio has been done very well with quite a bit of voice acting in there. The visuals look great as well too. There might be some you know places that don't look as good as they should. They might look a little more pixelated than they need to but that's just been a very small part of the game. Aside from that the game itself is beautiful. It looks great and it's definitely an original experience that most people missed out on because the Vita did not sell very well. So this to me kind of defines you know what would be a good PlayStation exclusive and some that would just be a good reason to play on a console overall. Now, is this a system seller? I personally don't think so. I wouldn't have, you know, gone out and bought a Vita just for this game. More like I bought a Vita and then I saw this game for cheap and I bought it, and that would kind of be the same thing with the PlayStation 4. And because of that, they also let you maximize your value with, as I said, this is not a $40 game, it is actually a $30 game. So most, most discounted games you see range in the $40, $45 area. This sells for $30 and it comes with all all the DLC and everything like that and they probably won't be releasing any more for this game so you're going to get the best really big complete director's cut of this game at the highest graphical fidelity that you can get. Now would I recommend this to any newcomers who are looking for some type of new game? Yes I would actually. I really enjoyed the first Gravity Rush and I still enjoy this version on the PlayStation 4. Whether you want to rent it, borrow it, or buy it is all up to you. And to anybody like myself who has played the PlayStation Vita version version of this game, is this game worth replaying, checking out again, or finishing on here? Again, yes, I actually think it would be worth it. Now again, whether you borrow it, rent it, buy it, is all up to you, and that is, you know, kind of an intrinsic value that you have to put on it. However, I myself feel like it is worth my time playing this properly on the PlayStation 4, and I would say that I would recommend the PlayStation 4 version completely over the PlayStation Vita version. Sorry, Vita, I mean, I love you, but... This version's better, and it looks really nice. Oh, but also to address that last audience, the audience of people who are coming back, some people might want to know if they can transfer their saves or transfer their trophies, anything like that. Well, from what I see, there's not a way to move your saves over. I myself have my saves synced up from my Vita and nothing popped up on the PlayStation 4 version, but if you are a trophy hunter, this has a whole new set of trophies because this is named as Gravity Rush Remastered, not Gravity Rush, so there is a separation between the two builds, meaning if you are hunting after trophies, you can definitely pick up this game and get all the trophies all over again if you want to. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching my first impressions. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope this might have swayed your decision one way or another.